Hello everyone. Today we will discuss important MCQs questions frequently asked in competitive exams and I will explain each question step by step along with some useful tricks. So make sure to stay with us until the end. Let's get started. Let's begin with a question from general microbiology. In general microbiology, many questions focus on sterilization topic and blood spill management. For example, let's look at this MCQ question. A patient was involved in a road traffic accident and was brought to the emergency room. The patient expatriated blood onto the floor. So which disinfectant should be used to clean the blood spill? So this question pertains to blood spill management and we must know the appropriate disinfectant for cleaning the blood spill is sodium hypochlorite, which is a bleaching agent that effectively disinfects surface. So the correct answer here is sodium hypochlorite and the ideal concentration for this purpose is 0.5% which is commonly used in hospitals for cleaning the blood spills. Okay, so second question is, which of the following statements is true about Trichomonas vaginalis? Options, it is not an sexual transmitted infection. Number two, wet saline mount of vaginal secretions show cyst. Number three, twitching motility seen on wet saline mount. Number four, it cannot be cultured. Okay, so first of all, we must understand that this Trichomonas vaginalis, it is a parasitic protozoa and it is responsible for causing trichomonasis and which is the most common parasitic sexual transmitted infection. So the option one, it is not an STI. This statement is absolutely incorrect because Trichomonas vaginalis is transmitted through sexual contact. Then second option, uh, secretion shows cyst. Again, this option is absolutely wrong because Trichomonas vaginalis does not have a cystic stage. It only exists in a trophoz trophozoite stage. Okay, then option number third, twitching motility seen on wet saline mound. And this option is absolutely correct. Trichomonas vaginalis belongs to the flagellate category, means it has flagella for movement. And on a wet mound, it shows characteristic twitching or jerky kind of motility, which is a key diagnostic feature. The last option, it cannot be cultured. Again, this statement is wrong. Many students assume that only bacteria can be cultured, but this is incorrect. Many protozoa parasites can also be cultured using specific media. Here in case of Trichomonas vaginalis, it can be cultured on diamonds media. So option C is the correct answer here. Okay, all right. The third question is a 32 year old patient presents with fatigue, abdominal discomfort and an itchy rash on the feet. The patient frequently walks barefoot. On examination, there is a linear serpiginous erythematous rash and the patient also reports early respiratory symptoms. Which clinical manifestation can be associated with this infection? Okay, so if we go through the question carefully, we can see that there are three key clues in the question. The number one is walking barefoot. Walking barefoot increases the risk of parasitic infection that penetrate the skin. So specifically, we have hookworm larva that enter the body by burrowing through the skin. Second is linear serpiginous erythematous rash. Serpiginous rash means a snake-like pattern or a creeping pattern. Again, this is a hallmark of cutaneous larva migraines, which is a condition caused by parasite like hookworm. These rash occurs as the larva migrate just beneath the skin and creating visible track. The third is respiratory symptoms. This indicates that the parasite is capable of traveling through the bloodstream to the lungs causing pulmonary symptoms. So if we go through these three clues, these three clues point us toward hookworm infection as the underlying cause. But this question isn't direct, right? They are asking clinical features associated with this infection. So let's learn more about this hookworm. As the name suggests, hookworms have hook-like teeth in their mouth, which they use to attach to the human intestine. And they perforate the mucosa, leading to internal bleeding. And over time, this chronic blood loss results in 
iron deficiency anemia so the correct answer here is iron deficiency anemia so next question is a man from bihar present with fever and skin lesions on microscopy an organism with a kinetoplast was seen what is a causative agent okay so in this question the key clue here is a term kinetoplast so first you should know what is kinetoplast kinetoplast is a unique structure that containing extra nuclear dna but the important thing is this kinetoplast is the hallmark of the family trypanosomatidae so to answer this question you should know which parasites belong to this family so just remember two important parasites leishmania and trypanosoma species both have the kinetoplast structure so uh, if we look at the options leishmania is listed so here in this case the correct answer is leishmania okay so our last question a patient presented with fever cough and respiratory distress on auscultation crepitations were present and an x ray showed consolidation in the right lower lobe of the lung what is the most likely causative agent so these are the options if you read the question again the patient has respiratory distress which indicate a lung infection but the x ray shows consolidation and this is the key clue here what does consolidation mean consolidation refers to the lungs being filled with fluid or pus which indicates that the patient has pneumonia it means the answer of this question revolves around pneumonia and this pneumonia is classified into two main types typical pneumonia atypical pneumonia typical pneumonia is always caused by bacteria just remember this it is always caused by bacteria and the another key point is consolidation is always present in typical pneumonia the examples of bacteria causing typical pneumonia include streptococcus pneumoniae which is the most common one followed by staphylococcus aureus acinetobacter so the point to remember here is typical pneumonia is always caused by bacteria and consolidation is present always present in typical pneumonia i think you might have figured out the correct answer here but to make it more simple let's understand atypical pneumonia atypical pneumonia can be caused by bacteria viruses fungi and parasites and remember that no consolidation is present in atypical pneumonia so few a few of the examples here like bacteria mycoplasma pneumoniae viruses coronavirus influenza fungi nemocystic gerovaci and some parasites so these are responsible for atypical pneumonia so if you analyze the question again it clearly mentions consolidation it means the patient has typical pneumonia and typical pneumonia is always caused by bacteria and the most common one is streptococcus pneumoniae and streptococcus pneumoniae is listed in the option so your answer here is streptococcus pneumoniae the other options fall under the atypical pneumonia category all right that's all for this video if you found it helpful don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to my channel and share the video with your friends thanks for watching see you in the next one